The boat carrying refugee Hamade Mansour and her son arrived on Australian shores in March 2013. They spent months in detention, but are now on a path to a permanent life in Australia. Hamadi's second son, Abdeen, was born in Australia. But just four months after Hamadi arrived, her sister and her two sons made the same journey. In between, Australia's government had announced a new policy towards refugees arriving by boat. People who come by boat now have no prospect of being resettled in Australia. The rules have changed. Fazila Mansour and her sons were sent to the tiny Pacific island of Nauru and were told they'd never leave. Some people was lucky and some people not. Just for a few months. Last month, Faribors, Hamaday's nephew, killed himself. He was 26. Five years in hot weather and in the tent, without condition, without nothing. Is it fair? My nephew said, I lost a lot of time. I said, no, you can't start again. You are young now. But he, just, he, he, he I lost him now. And I can't believe it. I can't believe it now. Australia's policy change in 2013 was in response to almost daily boats and about 50,000 people described as unauthorised arriving. From the 19th of July, all refugees and migrants were sent to either the tiny island state of Nauru or Manus Island in Papua New Guinea. As a deterrent, it worked. The boats had stopped arriving by the middle of 2014, by which time a new Australian government had added turning back boats at sea to the policy. Since the commencement of Operation Sovereign Borders, we've been able to provide the humane environment uh, for people to uh, settle in regional processing centres, obviously conducted by uh, in the Nauruan case, the Nauruan government, uh, in PNG, uh, by the PNG government, we provide assistance to those processes. But at the same time, the dividend of the success of stopping boats and most importantly stopping drownings at sea is that we've been able to offer a record number of, of places uh, under the humanitarian refugee program. An estimated 2,500 people were sent to Manus Island or Nauru. Around 600 were later paid to return to the countries they'd fled. 300 have been resettled in the United States and about 400 have been brought to Australia, though Australia's government will not say so publicly. 12 people have died or been killed on Manus or Nauru. About 1,000 people remain on the islands. If the policy is only successful uh, because it demands a sacrifice of human lives of people offshore, then it's not an effective policy. But neither big political party in Australia proposes changing the policy, so its fifth anniversary is unlikely to be its last. Andrew Thomas, Al Jazeera, Sydney.